Google I.O. is going on right now, and there were a lot of announcements. But what I want to talk about today more than anything is the new Gemini 2.5 Flash update. Because as many of you know, this model is one of my favorite, especially using root code in my micromanager. It's fast and it's so cheap. In fact, I actually do have a couple production workloads that still run Flash today that I need to actually see if I should upgrade to the 520 version of it. Now, just a little bit of a reminder here, the pricing of this does vary depending on if you're using the thinking version or the non-thinking version. 60 cents for a million tokens on the output for non-thinking, $3.50 for a million on the thinking version. And on the input price, it's 15 cents versus uh, 15 cents on the input side. And they do have text, image, and video and a dollar for audio. So it's a multimodal model. It's actually an incredible model. It is such a workhorse of a model. I think they actually even use that term at Google I.O. I've called it the, uh, like the shovel. It's like, it's the tool that you always want to go to. And one of the problems that I always had with Gemini 2.5 Flash in the past was really its ability to code. And I want to say this model feels substantially better. Now, I do want to be totally honest. Typically, I will put 20, 30 hours just hammering on something before I give a full review on it. So I'm not going to do that here, but I am going to share my initial impressions. My initial impressions are it works incredibly well. So this is a task that I did. It was actually a massive one. You can see by the context link from the top left here that I'm using 188,000 out of a million. My total cost was 39 cents. This is not the thinking version. This is just the regular one. 2.2 million tokens up, 108,000 down. Massive, massive refactor. Me iterating back and forth with it. It picking up errors really well. And in, in that entire process, there was one diff error, which honestly is kind of a miracle in Rue code, in my opinion, because the diff errors are just notorious. And especially once they hit one, it seems like they hit more and more and more down the road. But I literally got one and it recovered perfectly. So I'm a little bit more optimistic about this model being able to do big things. In fact, when I put it on this task, I actually did not expect it to do as well as it did. It had a couple major um, hiccups in there where I was able to redirect it. Like it, it basically forgot to do some authentication, found that, told it about it. It did it perfectly. But literally like 70% of the work, it just handled for me for 39 cents. Like it, I, if I were to do this manually and everything that's been done here, it would take me probably an entire day. I'm going to be totally honest with you. And it did it in a matter of minutes for 39 cents. Unbelievable the world we live in now. Now, it is incredibly fast. So we also have to take, a, take into account, when I talk about my eval scores here in a little bit, look at the speed of this thing. It literally is almost, like, I can run three runs. So this is the combination. The blue bar is three runs the total time. The red bar is just the average of those three runs. You can see, compared to Claude, um, Claude 3.7, it is so freaking fast. And now this may change if demand picks up or whatnot, but right now, I was very, very impressed. In fact, like if you look, the, in total time, the total time of all three tasks was less than the average time that Windsurf took with Claude 3.7 or the same eval that I was running on it. Now, I do have a lot to talk about on the eval side, and but I'll try to keep it kind of short. So you can see the bottom highlighted one here. It's the Flash 412. I have that snapshotted. It got a 51.5%. The Gemini 2.5 Flash 520 got a 56.20. So a pretty nice improvement there on my test, honestly. Um, but it feels maybe better than this represents. Again, I need to put more time into it. I do feel like it feels on par with, I would say, the way Gemini 2.5 Pro, honestly, has been working for me lately. Uh, and I did test with different temperature settings, too, and my eval scores were just very, very, very similar. So it doesn't seem to be highly sensitive to temperature like I found some of the other models to be. 
So pretty, pretty big boost here. Now, what about the thinking model? I actually introduced another agent here. I did a bring my own key. I brought in uh, open router and I hooked up Gemini 2.5 flash thinking. Now, Copilot did exceptionally better and I'm not totally sure what to equate that to, but uh, it's slower. But it's still, it, it's a lot faster when you bring your own key, by the way. It is significantly faster. So I've been testing that. I'm trying to decide if I want to do another video on Copilot. Because bringing your own key, I actually think their agent is pretty good. But their built-in, like Claude 3.7 or Claude 3.5, is atrociously slow. But it scored a 65.30, which is up there with Gemini 2.5 Pro. Uh, which is up there with Claw 3.7 Sonnet. Now, the colors here do mean something. The darker green color is Windsurf. The regular blue color is Copilot. And then the light kind of teal color is Rucode. I need to figure out a better way to represent that. But most of my tests have been on Rucode, but I'm trying to start trickling in other agents because I want to see how they kind of work with one another. Now, if we drop down... To Rucode, Gemini 2.5 Flash Thinking on 5.20, the, the latest version, is 54.3%. Very similar, but slightly worse, the Gemini 2.5 Flash, um, the regular version. Which surprised me, because let's look at the very bottom highlighted piece here. Gemini 2.5 Flash Thinking used to be horrible at coding in Rucode. It would diff fail a ton. It just had a lot of problems. So this could be something where I started to rerun all of these tests. Uh, but in general, the thing that I found is that the thinking version has improved a ton, at least in the RuCode agent. Now there's two variables there, both the model and RuCode is updating their stuff constantly. So the, the time that I actually took that bottom one was on April 17th. That's when I ran that test, just to be fully transparent. So we can't always equate it to that big of a boost in the model, as well as maybe even, you know, RuCode made improvements to their particular uh, agent work that they've got there. Another thing to note here with the teal color ones for RuCode, I'm running them all with code mode. And... I've actually done some tests with boomerang mode with Gemini 2.5 Flash, the regular one, got very similar scores as I did with code mode, basically within like 0.5%. It was so close all the time. Now, so I didn't actually run a full suite of those because it's basically doesn't behave much different there. But I also want to touch on this really quick because as I'm trickling in Copilot stuff, you can see that RuCode... Copilot and Windsurf have very similar Claw 3.7 scores, but Rucode's slightly behind here, uh, partly because of the tool call failures that happen, but also the quality of the output is usually getting scored slightly less. Um, so I, the way I do that is I actually have a Python script that runs. I have a set of uh, automated tests that I have built that based on the, the spec that I give it should be passable. And the scoring of that will typically be lower on the root code one. I was very surprised that Copilot and Windsurf are basically the same. I mean, we're looking at 0.5% there. And if I ran them five times, you know, it, they, they might average out to around 73% each because the variance is, I try to keep it tight, but there is a slight, you know, margin of error there always. So I do really want to consider... You know, if I go back to the uh, Gemini 2.5 Flash thinking and Flash one, I do want to consider running it in Windsurf when they have it available. I checked today. It wasn't updated in there yet. In fact, I couldn't even find uh, Gemini Flash 2.5. There could be some configuration I need to go dig into. I'm not a Windsurf expert yet. I'm still learning my way through that. So when that does happen, I'm going to start dripping that in here as well. And then I also need to figure out a way to automate some of these a little bit better so I don't have to, it doesn't take up so much time on it. Now, the final thing I want to close out on this video is they talked about Google AI Ultra for $249 a month. They actually are giving you three months for $124.99. My question is, who is that for? I'm not, I'm not kidding you on that. Um, but my theory is 
that OpenAI had that $200 a month plan. I could care less about that until recently when Codex came out. Now I'm paying for it, and I probably will continue to pay for that for the foreseeable future until something else comes along that's better. But Google AI Ultra, I feel like they're in a place now where they even announced Jules, and they've announced like GitHub uh, Copilot in the web, and they've got the Gemini Code Assistant in VS Code, which isn't that great, but I mean, it is something. But why is that stuff not on here? Why aren't they trying to entice us coders a little bit with something? When I look at the value of what this is providing, I see literally no reason for me to ever pay $249.99 a month. But I have a sneaking suspicion that something is going to come out. They're going to add something that's going to make this much more uh, coder friendly. We'll just have to see. I mean, even API credits would be amazing. Link it to my um, AI Studio account and give me, you know, $100 worth of API credits. So that would actually be pretty sweet. All right, I think that's going to wrap that up. Let me know what you guys thought about all of the announcements at Google I.O. I have a ton of thoughts about a lot of the other things they've announced. And i am actually been testing out Jules a little bit. The five task limit is kind of painful, to be totally honest with you. So I'm probably going to want to give that one a few days before I do any sort of full review on it. Ideally, they unlock me from that five tasks limit. And if you happen to make it this far in the video, wouldn't mind considering liking and subscribing. I am blown away by the amount of support I get from everyone. And I can't thank you guys enough. So until next time, everyone, peace out.